These are selected scenes from the 111 minute long Advanced TIG Welding DVD. Check out all the Covell DVDs at covell.biz. Hello, I'm Ron Covell. A couple of years ago I came out with my TIG Welding Basics DVD and it's been very popular. But a lot of people have contacted me with questions like, how do you weld titanium and magnesium? How do you weld bronze? How do you weld castings? Some of the newer machines have pulse and waveform shaping controls. How do you set those? We're going to cover these subjects and a lot more. So join me as we explore the world of advanced TIG welding. In certain cases, you can join dissimilar metals by welding. I have a piece of stainless steel, a piece of copper, and a piece of mild steel, and silicon bronze rod sticks to all of them. So I'm going to use that bronze rod to make welds between the stainless and the copper and between the mild steel and the copper. Okay, so we've successfully welded together dissimilar metals. I'll tip this up now so you can have a close look at it. So you can see that the bronze rod flows beautifully on all three types of metal. So I've sanded the parts to get the discoloration off and you can see it's cleaned up beautifully. So there are many architectural and sculptural applications for joining dissimilar metals like this. And I should also mention that bronze can be part of the mix. Using silicon bronze filler rod, we can weld bronze to stainless steel or to copper or to mild steel. So these are some good tricks to know. Now let's get into some of the advanced settings possible with this machine. I'll start with the pulser. The pulser works with both AC and DC welding, and it cycles the current between an upper limit, or peak current, and a lower limit, or background current. The upper limit is set as an actual amperage, and the background amperage is set as a percentage of peak. For example, if I set the peak at 90 amps, and I set the background to 40%, the background amperage will be 36 amps. If I drop the peak from 90 to 50 amps and leave the background at 40%, the background amperage will be 20 amps. Let's look at an arc that's pulsing once per second. Now 10. Now 100 pulses per second. The pulser has many benefits. Some people set the pulser to a very low level and use it to time the addition of filler rod. This is one way to get the classic stack of dimes look to a weld bead. I've track welded two pieces of 40,000 stainless and now I'll finish weld them using the pulse feature. 100 pulses per second is a good starting point and you can work up from there. Faster pulsing gives you a smoother ripple pattern. It narrows the bead and agitates the puddle which can benefit the mechanical properties of the weld. Okay, so there's our weld on 40,000 stainless with the pulser. And let's compare this weld with the one we made earlier with no pulsing. And I think you'll see quite some difference between them. So comparing the piece I just welded with the piece I welded earlier, you can really see what difference the pulsing makes. So with the pulsing, the heat affected zone is smaller and there's much less distortion. So that's the real advantage of the pulse settings. There's always been something magic for me about welding. It's like having fire in the control of your hands. And I can apply that heat to anything I want to. And using this process, you can make all kinds of useful things. You can fix many things that are broken. It really gives me a tremendous feeling of control to make a beautiful weld. So I hope you've enjoyed today's presentation, and I encourage you to get out there and learn as much about welding as you can. Until next time, this is Ron Covell, signing off. Learn metalworking and welding from a master, Covell DVDs, the standard of the industry.